to this guy yes and in love with this girl so whenever he gets the smell he remembers that time in the classroom when that girl is sitting next to him and he gets these memories of this conversation he had with her and all that So how about we take a look at this diagram from Gyanong now. Now this diagram, as a medical student, I never really understood this, to be very frank. And I really never understood it. I just couldn't make sense of it. There were a lot of nuclear anterior olfactory, nuclear anterior olfactory tubercle and pyriform cortex, entomanual cortex. I didn't understand where these structures were, what they do or any of them. So I'll help you understand that through a small story and how they actually function. We'll take a look at it at a very physiological point of view. Okay, so I told you about a medial stri and lateral stri, medial most part of the cortex and subcortical structures. So that medial most part, that medial stri is related to more primitive things and discrimination and all those things are related to more newer parts that are the lateral stri. So when we talk about these structures, I just explain how it happens. From the mitral cell and the tufted cell, they are going to go into separate regions. From the tufted cell, it is going to go into a structure called the anterior olfactory nucleus and this kind of ends over here in something called a anterior olfactory tubercle. This is anterior olfactory tubercle. So from the tufted cell, it is going to stop at anterior olfactory nucleus and it is going to go to anterior olfactory tubercle. So this is the exact anatomy as it is. We got the olfactory bulb, at the end of it we have the olfactory nucleus and we got the anterior olfactory tubercle and beyond it over here we got your temporal lobe of the brain above this over here we got the frontal lobe so this is kind of at the midsection of the frontal lobe of the brain and the temporal lobe of the brain can you understand the picture so we got the temporal lobe of the brain over there so this is the anterior olfactory nucleus and anterior olfactory tract and we talk about the mitral cell they are going to go and go to first something called the pyriform cortex so this is part of your olfactory cortex so olfactory cortex is a huge area which is uh, taking part in places of your uncus and all that in your temporal lobe so in that there's an area called pyriform cortex so that is where it first goes to. So you also have to know that from mitral cell, it also goes to this and this. My tufted cell goes only to the anterior olfactory nucleus and anterior olfactory tubercle. And this anterior olfactory nucleus helps communicate with the other side, the contralateral side. So there are two bulbs like this, this side and that side. So this signals from this side is going to go to the other side. So actually it has an inhibitory action on the contralateral side. So that is your anterior olfactory nucleus. Understood? So from here on, we'll see what happens. So from the pyriform cortex, it is going to go to parts of your amygdala. It is going to go to the entorhinal cortex. It is going to go to Orbito, so orbit, orbito frontal cortex. So we got the amygdala, we got the entorhinal cortex, we got the orbito frontal cortex. From the amygdala, it goes to hypothalamus. From the entorhinal cortex, it goes to hippocampus. And from pyriform cortex, it also goes to parts of the medial part of thalamus. So, a more medial part of thalamus. So, some uh, 
questions have come where uh, they ask that which is the only sensory uh, organ where uh, there was no release station in the thalamus that question by itself is kind of wrong okay i, I get that it, it does not actually go to the ventral posterior nucleus of thalamus but then the other senses when you talk about the auditory system or the visual system they go to lateral and medial geniculate body so ultimately parts of the thalamus like the ventral posterior nucleus and the geniculate body is where all these sensations go but this goes to a medial part of the thalamus okay so that is your piriform cortex and from there it goes to different parts so now you need to understand what these parts are where it is and how to understand all these things okay so again i'll uh, draw another diagram of the same thing so this is the olfactory tubercle here we got the frontal lobe so parts of the uh, orbital frontal cortex are there and over here this kind of ends your temporal lobe starts and let's make this the uncle part like this so uh, this ends and this is your tubercle right so this is the olfactory tubercle which is present you get the picture what is happening here yes okay so over here we got the first region that is your piriform cortex from here it goes to the piriform cortex and we got the hippocampus over here the hippocampal gyra is over there and this goes to form the fornix and goes like this and over here we got the entorhinal cortex if you know the neuroanatomy actually this part is thrown into folds like this it's thrown into a fold like this so we got the dentate gyrus we got the proper hippocampus and uh, uh, then we got the subiculum right so that is where this entorhinal cortex comes into play and from there we got the hippocampal structure and structures are carried through your fornix like this and goes to hypothalamus and septal nucleus and like that mammillary body and goes to thalamus and your cingulate gyrus so that is your papi circuit so that is one thing that has happened and also above this we got your amygdaloid nucleus so this is if you know the neuron anatomy again there is your caudate nucleus just coming like this and at the end of the caudate nucleus we got the amygdaloid nucleus so that is present over there so on top over here we got the thalamus and below that we have the hypothalamus right and below that we have the pituitary hope this makes sense so we got the anterior uh, the olfactory tubercle over here this is the olfactory bulb this is the olfactory tubercle this is the piriform cortex this is the entorhinal cortex this is the amygdaloid nucleus this is the hippocampus this is the orbital frontal cortex we got the thalamus we got the hypothalamus over here so as i had mentioned earlier from olfactory tubercle it is going to go to piriform cortex from piriform cortex it will go to entorhinal cortex from where it is going to go to hippocampus now from here it can also go to your amygdala and from amygdala it can go to hypothalamus and from there impulses go down and from piriform cortex it can also go to your thalamus and from this ultimately it goes to cingulate gyrus and all that and there are connections like this like this with the cortex so do you see what happening over here okay so in order to understand this okay all this the same very complicated and all that but it's very simple if you understand it physiologically and i always say whenever you study the nervous system central nervous system anything you need to understand neuroanatomy so if you are in first year right now and it's about to end 
please make sure that you learn neuroanatomy well. If you learn the neuroanatomy well, you'll understand CNS very easily. So I always say this to everyone, whether it's PGs or UGs, if you don't know neuroanatomy, study neuroanatomy really well. You understand these structures, where it is, how it acts and how they're connected. You get a clear picture of that and then CNS is easy for you. If not, CNS is going to be hell. Okay, so we saw all these structures, we understand where and how it is connected and all that. Now we'll try to understand it very physiologically. It's very easy. Once you hear this, you'll be like dumbfound. Yeah, you'll be like, why the hell didn't I understand this? Because nobody teaches you like that. Okay, so let's take it from a very physiological point of view. Let's take a story to help us understand this. So remember uh, Gerald the, and the lilac and gooseberry story I had mentioned earlier. Yes, so in a similar setting, we'll think about the protagonist in our story. There's this guy. This guy is hopelessly, haplessly in love with this girl. Now, uh, this girl has a particular smell about her. She wears this particular perfume and he doesn't know. He's never uh, got that smell from anyone else before. So that smell always reminds him of this one girl. And he's madly in love with this girl. So he is sitting one day somewhere and all of a sudden he feels the smell wafting through like this. Right? So what happens? That smell, you know, that smell is going to activate a certain set of receptors. That receptor is going to activate one set of olfactory bulb glomus and it makes sure that the others are not activated through periglomerular and granules and it is going to specifically go. Now we need to understand what is happening here. So let's take the guy again. So that guy is there. He needs to understand the smell. Lilac and gooseberries. He needs to understand the composition. So that first starts from pyriform cortex. It's a cortical structure. Right? So this pyriform cortex is the first place where initiation of segregation takes place, the composition. The anterior part of the pyriform cortex helps us distinguish the composition. And the posterior part helps it differentiate between different odors. So the anterior part understands the composition and the posterior part understands uh, by differentiating it with other odors in a concentration independent manner. That is important. If one thing is more higher in concentration, obviously that is going to be more receptive. But in a concentration independent manner, it can differentiate between odors. So that is the anterior and posterior pyriform cortex. So lilac, gooseberry, they've been segregated, started segregating over here itself. All right, okay. Now, from here, different things should happen. So this guy is in love with this girl. Whenever he gets the smell, he remembers that time in the classroom when that girl is sitting next to him and he gets these memories of this conversation he had with her and all that. So those memories start coming to picture. Which part is associated with memory? That is your hippocampus. Episodic memories are associated with hippocampus. Now, from the endorhinal cortex, it is now going to go to hippocampus and it is going to go. Now from the hippocampus, through the phonics, the hypothalamus like that, the papi circuit is there. Finally, he gets to go to the cingulate gyrus where the emotional colouring takes place. He thinks about her skin and how her eyes move and all that and the emotional colouring, how he perceives things. That feeling sort of thing comes in, the subjective feeling comes through that. So ultimately memory is hippocampus. Alright, now apart from that, now he's sitting there and all of a sudden he gets the smell and if you've been in this situation, which I know most of you have been, you would know that your heart will start to beat very fast. Right, your hands start trembling and all that thing. Okay, and you start sweating a lot. So that sort of reaction is going to happen with the help of this. And you feel all emotional, all the emotionally charged memories and all that. Right, so that emotional component is with the amygdala 
and through the amygdala's connection with hypothalamus and hypothalamus activate your sympathetic parasympathetic accordingly and based on that and also hypothalamus acts on the pituitary gland to release all the hormones that are necessary at this point so that that feeling and sensation all that thing also oxytocin vasopressin right that we know is very much linked to feelings virtue right love affection and all that trust and all that thing so oxytocin vasopressin right other hormones the catecholamine should be released sympathetic activity should be there right kind of a stressful situation is there now for the guy so that is your amygdala through hypothalamus is going to release that and the emotional component is there like that and the memories associated is there like that you understand the picture so there's this one particular uh, soap that i know right there was this uh, dow soap i think with the uh, dow soap and it had different uh, shapes and all that so whenever i if i get the smell of that i remember my childhood i start remembering uh, incidents from my childhood where i used to bathe with that and uh, you know that nostalgic feeling and all that so that is this thing so that is what happened from here after segregating it into different components it is now going to send to the hippocampus where episodic memories are stimulated it is now going to go to amygdala where emotional components kick in and the effect which is a increase in heart rate and all that right so all that is also taking place now he is there the smell has come right now he needs to make a move he needs to turn and see the person and he needs to make a move now he needs to decipher things more properly he needs to see okay i think it is this girl but i need to make sure that the smell is actually that it could be many other smell so for that conscious discrimination more conscious discrimination it goes to your orbital frontal cortex and orbital frontal cortex is very linked to making decisions in your body so in your brain this part helps make decisions so then okay the smell is there all that right if you didn't have a cor- uh, frontal cortex say for example right a person with a lesion in the frontal cortex would get the smell initially get attracted and go to the girl but you're sitting there right you got to imagine this person has a pimple on that day on that particular day he has two big pimples over here he gets the smell he ba- he wants to go and talk emotional component is the memory the everything is there he wants to badly go and talk to the girl but your orbital frontal cortex now registers he saw the girl he got the smell he got feeling everything but it's finally making a decision no you look very bad today you got uh, two big uh, pimple on your face you don't want to see her at this point as you shy away another situation you are there walking through an alley all of a sudden you get the smell very bad smell and all of a sudden uh, there's this guy coming from the opposite side and he smells of alcohol and smoke so your orbital frontal cortex decides okay it's night past 12 o'clock i'm alone there's this guy opposite me who's smelling really bad and i can sense danger that sense of danger increase in heart rate and all that so i made tell again and it's making a decision okay it's not safe for me to go over there it's not safe for me to continue on this track i am going to turn around and go another way so that sort of decision making is through your orbital frontal cortex all right so you see what is happening here is that simple everything is clear now smell is coming is going to activate the receptor and as cyclic cyclic amp calcium chloride finally action potential it is going to go to one particular glomus sharpening by periglomerular granule cell and it is going to go to anterior olfactory nucleus olfactory tract which is a part from tufted cell so this anterior olfactory nucleus is going to go to the opposite side and inhibit the opposite side so that it knows that it is completely coming from this one region and this also goes to parts of the cortex from here okay and also from this this is going to 
pyriform cortex as well. Right, so from here it is going to piriform cortex, from the venous side it is going to piriform cortex and anterior and posterior piriform cortex have differential ability to segregate things and differentiate between odors and all and understand the composition. After that it is now going to send to amygdala where emotional charge things happen, hypothalamus finally, where the effect is taking place, the entorhinal cortex hippocampus where memories associated are happening and orbitofrontal cortex for more segregation and final decision making and all that. So this in mammals especially lower mammals you take a look at a road and rat right so for them this smell is a very important thing for lower animals smell is a very important thing unlike us we evolved a little more but in lower animals smell is a very important thing. you give them a food they come smell it you put them in a new area, they try to smell it and see what is there, what all is there. Smell forms a very important part to give a social mapping of odor. That is another function of this part. And even in humans, that social odor mapping is done with the orbitofrontal cortex. So you understand the picture? Yes. So I don't think you need another explanation about the olfactory nervous system ever again. You just think about the story, what happens, and if you link it all physiologically, you can see how easily it goes in the flow. It's that simple. Now again, you can go and take a look at the diagram in Gano and try to see what happens. Right? So I hope uh, I made it very clear for you and I made it easy for you. And in the next episode, we'll deal with taste. So thank you. Oh.